All right, still sick, but doing my Star Wars Rise of Skywalker spoiler talk. And that's a spoiler warning. If you haven't seen Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, you probably shouldn't watch this. So there's a lot to talk about. Again, this is like most spoiler talks I do. This isn't going to be a play-by-play, -play, but there's more to talk about in here than a lot of my other spoiler videos. So we're just going to get right into it. And if you find it difficult to take a grown man in a Star Wars shirt and a bathrobe seriously, well, can't help you. So what you get today. So all right, as the movie starts out, it says the dead speak. I guess Palpatine sent out some force voicemail announcing to the galaxy, I'm back, bitches. So he's back and now everyone knows he's back, which is actually pretty dumb. Why'd he do that? Even when Voldemort came back, he was like, I mean, I'm back, but I'm just gonna let my goons know that I'm back and not really a lot of other people, so no one will believe the little brat who says I'm back. That's smart. Palpatine announcing it to everyone, that's not too smart, because that eliminates the possibility of people having doubt. Would have been so much cooler if certain people found out Palpatine's back and other people were like, Bullshit. Come on, he can't be back. But immediately the movie starts out in a montage where Kylo Ren's just kind of cleaning house and then he finds this little holocron that's not a holocron that totally looks like a Sith holocron. I mean, it's just a Sith device that has Sith information but it's not a holocron. Fine, and I also read a couple comments where people were like, but Star Wars always starts out at the end of another situation, which I kind of disagree with, but kind of agree with. It does, but that's every situation. The beginning of any situation is also the end of another situation. That's just kind of how it works. But when a movie starts out with a montage that's just cleaning up the end of an act, I, I just feel like we missed something. Don't worry, there will be a book. Promise. So anyhow, Kylo Ren wants to find Palpatine to take him down because he's like, no one's gonna threaten my power. Palpatine's like, my boy. But of course, Kylo Ren has his own plans. He wants to get Rey and they're just gonna rule the galaxy together. On with the scavenger hunt. I'm not really gonna go too much into the scavenger hunt, but it's totally a scavenger hunt. Complete with the dagger that shows where something is, which what's up with that dagger? Like I'm totally down with the little item that shows you the location of a super secret ancient thing. But when it's this item that shows you the location of something among 40 year old wreckage kind of takes the mysticism out of it. It's like, uh, so we're not talking thousands or hundreds of years ago. Pointing to something that's in 40 year old garbage. Sure, we're not exactly calling Indiana Jones here. It doesn't belong in a museum. But there's a spy in the first order. Guess who it is? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that reveal. I'm the spy. Of course you are, Hux. <laughs> <laughs> what else would you be doing? Which actually could have been a cool arc about as cool as a stormtrooper turning good and they're about to waste that as much as they did waste that because the newer, much cooler commander just shoots Hux in the chest. He's like, all right, you're dead now. We found the spy, moving on. Because again, damage control. I see that a lot in this movie. The Last Jedi made calls and now this movie has to do damage control for it. Hux could have been an awesome commander. They would have built him up in The Last Jedi, but instead Ryan Johnson was like, nah, let's just smack him around. It's funny, right? All right, well now no one fears Hux, so we might as well kill him and bring someone else in. It completely wasted Hux. I said Rey is OP in this movie and she is OP. Like, come, she's more OP in here than she's ever been. She was already OP. You know what I realized? Of the core Star Wars heroes, like the mains, Luke, Anakin, Rey. Rey is the only one who never took damage. At first I was like, well, she's the only one who never lost a hand or an arm. And then I thought about it and I'm like, she never actually took damage. There's that one scene where Snoke's holding her in the air and she's screaming. That's the most damage she really ever takes. No limbs, nothing. It's just, Huh. OP. I mean, even Finn got his fucking spine slashed and then after that, didn't do much. He was, he was the friend. Also, this is a movie where everyone dies and comes back. Well, not everyone, but it happens more than a few times where someone dies and then comes back. Like when Rey is holding the ship with the force because you know, She's that powerful. She's holding and then she with reflex shoots force lightning and blows up the ship that supposedly Chewie's in. And you're like, holy shit, did Chewie just die? <laughs> a couple scenes later, it's revealed not Chewie didn't die, but it's kind of a weird scene to me. It's like Chewie's dead and then all of a sudden the movie goes psych, but Chewie's not fake dead long enough for it to actually be impactful. It's like Chewie's, oh no, he's not dead, he's fine. So why even give me the psych out? It, it doesn't matter. And C-3PO died and then he came back. His memory was wiped, which I mean, and on one hand you're like, so C-3PO and all his memories from the original trilogy now, he's essentially dead. He's a new droid now, but that actually happened at the end of the prequels, so he's been mind wiped before. But for a moment there, I was like, C-3PO, he just legit died. Kylo Ren fake dies like three times in the movie. <laughs> he fights Rey and then Leia, like, you know, distracts him, which actually Leia was done very well. Untimely tragedy with Carrie Fisher, they had very little to work with. And so they actually, of the, of the limits they had, the Carrie Fisher thing was actually pulled off very well. Distracts Kylo Ren and then Rey stabs Kylo Ren. At first I was like, oh, 
Kylo Ren's dead now? Yeah, she force heals. So, so Rey can force heal, which I don't have a problem with the concept of force heal. That's That's been in Star Wars, especially the games. If you play the Star Wars MMOs, you play Old Republic or whatever, like force heal is an ability. You can heal with the force. I totally get that. But the fact that she's so new that she could just heal with the force, that's... That's weird. Where did she learn that? Luke didn't teach her because Luke doesn't come to her again until here. In The Last Jedi, he didn't teach her jack shit. So did Leia teach her? Maybe, because Leia can fly through outer space. Maybe she taught her to force heal. I guess Leia's been training her in the force even though Leia dipped out on training decades ago. That's actually the thing that flew over my head in The Force Awakens when she force manipulated the stormtrooper. People were like, how does she know how to do that? I had already made my videos and <laughs> then I heard that and I was like, how does she know how to do that? And so now I, I look for that. I look for things that people know with the force. It's like, how do they know how to do that? This movie has a couple. Anyhow, she force heals Kylo Ren, goes away, and then Kylo Ren's like, he's really conflicted. Then you hear, hey kid. And I actually thought it was Luke Skywalker. And I was like, oh, it's low. Whoa, whoa, it's Han. Like Harrison Ford actually came back. He's not CGI. Like I would have probably put money on that he would have been if I heard Han Solo was in this movie. But no, he gives Kylo Ren a pep talk and the talk was actually good. That that moment is actually a good moment. I love a good father-son moment. What can I say? I'm mushy like that. He even uses the same lines where it's like, I know what I need to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Showing that turning good is as hard as turning bad. It's like taking that step out of where you are. It's just a hard thing. And that's fair. That was actually a good moment. Also, two things. I want to know how much that paycheck was. <laughs> I want to know how big that paycheck was that brought Harrison Ford back. That guy doesn't even give a fuck about about Star Wars. The fact that he's even in this is he can retire now, I have to assume. But also that's gotta be the single most important cameo in the whole thing. Like the, the whole thing. Because if they're gonna turn Kylo Ren good and turn him back into Ben Solo, you need his dad, also the person he killed, to give the okay, to sign off on it so we can accept it. Because if you don't have his murdered dad saying, guys, audience, it's okay, I forgive him, he's my son, you should too. Then we're all just gonna be like, fuck that asshole, and so we're not gonna buy it. So for the movie, that's actually a really important cameo, so I hope Disney wrote him a very big check. However, Han Solo wasn't a Jedi, so... He was a memory? He's- I kind of took it like Dumbledore and Harry Potter. I have so many Harry Potter comparisons. I don't know why. Kind of took it as a Dumbledore thing with Harry Potter where it was like, it's, is it a memory or a hallucination? Point is, but the words speak to the person so it's real to them. However, in reality, it's Disney going, we need you, Harrison. We need ya, because Kylo's gonna do important stuff when he's good. He's not, though. What Ben Solo does in this movie is he takes out the Knights of Ren, who were also very fucking useless. Master of the Knights of Ren. Who are the Knights of Ren? Jack shit, that's what they are. They're nothing. It feels like the Knights of Ren were ever created to give Ben Solo something to take down. And he does. After the Knights of Ren don't do jack shit, he just kind of takes down the Knights of Ren. And this is the most important thing. It's all led to this. He and Rey have one of the most awkward kisses ever in Star Wars. Two for two in the awkward kiss scale. Good job, Disney Star Wars. Finn and Rose, Rey and Ben. Equally awkward. It just felt like YA novel bullshit. I was like, I thought we were over this. I thought the young adult novel genre, I thought that was dead. I forgot Luke comes back. So Rey goes to the Jedi temple planet that Luke was on in Last Jedi. She's throwing wood on the fire and she throws a lightsaber and Luke's ghost hand grabs it and he's like, this should be treated with respect. Last Jedi, you hear that? Like, it's totally a jab at Last Jedi. And she was like, well, you came here, and he was like, I was wrong. The point is Palpatine's back. And when you see Palpatine, it's actually really neat. You know, the flickering light. He looks like a ghoul. He looks like something out of a horror movie. And the movie doesn't really explain how he's back, just that he's back. And they even use the line, Dark side of the force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Good job using that line from the old movies to just kind of validate the fact that it's like, well, it's unnatural and you're around, whatever, don't ask. Is it because he learned Darth Plagueis' way of living forever? Is he a clone? It looks like he's cloning Snoke. Or maybe Snoke is a creation because he learned how to create life with the midichlorians? I say the word, but that's just the lore. Which I thought was dumb. Why? So Snoke is, is some sort of creation of Palpatine. Ground up creation, clone or otherwise. Point is, you see Snoke's body and he has so many scars and he's all twisted and messed up. You're like, ooh, there's a story there. No, the story is cloning is a hell of a thing. It's hard. Sometimes the bodies are... They're messed up. Oh, well, that's just much less interesting. So basically Snoke is one of the twisted, fucked up, failed versions of Ripley in Alien Resurrection. Palpatine was like, good enough. Let's, let, let's just go ahead and rebuild the forces. I mean, granted, I already have my fleet hidden in ice. But go forth, Prosper. And yeah, there, no, this movie does not have a Death Star. I guess every Star Destroyer is a Death Star. 
I mean, the Death Star is a big deal. It's a big special thing. It took decades to make, and that's actually the leap I have to take for Return of the Jedi is the fact that they just kind of made another Death Star. But now every Star Destroyer has Death, it's a Death Star now. Which really means jack shit. It doesn't do anything for the movie. It's like, ooh, there's a big threat. Yeah, Palpatine's also a big threat. You can just have him go ahead and be the threat. Why do you need miniaturized Death Star tech on Star Destroyers? And how, how? <laughs> I get tech gets smaller and more powerful as time goes on, I get it. I feel like that would have been the conversation at the round table where someone should have just drawn the line, but like, no more Death Stars! Anything else but Death Stars! But I guess when, if planets don't blow up, it doesn't feel threatening enough. Which you find out in this movie, Palpatine needs energy. He can sap force energy or life force from people and that's how he's gonna become complete. He's gonna be Palpatine Prime now. Before that, he's just kinda, he has no pupils and he looks like he's hooked up to GLaDOS's body from Portal. So when Rey and Ben Solo are there, he saps their life force and becomes, he's a complete Palpatine now. So Palpatine saps the life force from Rey and Ben and he becomes Palpatine as, as we knew him, which actually I, I did like the red lining in his robe. That was cool looking. But also he is Palpatine as we knew him, all messed up Palpatine. But how though? Because Supposedly his face got scarred when Mace Windu deflected the force lightning back onto his face Which means if Palpatine gets recreated or cloned or whatever this is He should look like that like if I have a scarred up face and you clone me my my clones not gonna have the scar Regardless he shoots a bunch of force lightning into the air and blast a huge chunk of this fleet But he shoots the force lightning at Rey and Rey just blocks it Blocks it like it's nothing. This is what I'm talking about when I say OP. It's not just the force healing, it's the fact that he shot a force lightning that eradicated a section of the fleet. But Ray's like, boom, blocked. I got this. How do you got this? There is a line where Palpatine's like, I am all the Sith and you are all the Jedi. So is, is she literally, she has the powers of all the Jedi? She must because then she deflects the force lightning back to Palpatine, which instead of being smart, Palpatine's like, I, I recognize what's happening. I'm not gonna do this again. Mace Windu did this exact same thing to me. Stop in the force lightning before it kills me. But she deflects it back and I know those old books, old canon, it's been wiped away. Which this just shows why the old canon is just, I like it more. Because it had rules, because that ability to deflect force lightning, that's something Mace Windu knew how to do. And he deflected it back at Palpatine. It just created some feedback loop that just messed him up. That's how it messed him up. But no, I guess she just knows how to do that very specific ability. How? No one was alive who could have taught her that. But again, the line where it's like, I am all the Sith, you are all the Jedi, because apparently we're in the plot of the movie, The One with Jet Li. I did like that force moment where she's looking up at the stars and you hear all the voices, because you're like, oh, that's, that's totally Mace Windu. Dude, that's Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, that's Qui-Gon Jinn. There he is, Liam Neeson. I heard from someone that you hear Anakin Skywalker say, bring balance as I did, which is their way of being like, look, it's not that he didn't bring balance, it's that she's also gonna do it now. Maybe that's their way of explaining how she could do Mace Windu's thing, but it just, it just shows me what, it just, it proves the point. That you feel like the conversation at the round table was like, look guys, we have the force, we can do anything. Whereas Lucas would have been like, look, we have the force, but it's not like we can just do anything. <laughs> the difference in mindset right there. And so yeah, she deflects it back to Palpatine, vaporizes him, no problem. Then she goes to Tatooine, buries the lightsaber, creates her own lightsaber because toys. And someone's like, oh, what's your name? And she's like, Ray, Ray who? She sees Luke and Leia and she goes, Skywalker. There's a part of me that thinks it would have been cooler to be like Palpatine, but people know the name Palpatine. They'd have been like, oh really? Yeah, uh, no, we're gonna kill you before you cause a problem. So one half of me gets it. The other half though, it's, that would have been the greatest slap in the face to Palpatine to be like, no, now the name Palpatine is a name for good. Your legacy as you wanted to build it is dead. That would have been cooler, you know, but it, it is what it is. I guess she's a Skywalker now. She was so bonded with Luke Skywalker and his grumpy ass in The Last Jedi that it, it means so much to her. I mean, Skywalker means a lot to us. I just don't feel like the name meant as much to Rey. So I don't know why she took it on. Except the fact that it means a lot to us. Oh, I forgot to really elaborate on Rey's a Palpatine. Rey's a Palpatine. Are we just gonna not talk about the fact that Palpatine had a kid? Palpatine had a kid who then had a kid, like Palpatine's a grandpa. I mean, did he have a wife? Obviously he got down. Did he have sex when he looked like that or when he looked like that? Look, in the end, this movie makes me think of the whole trilogy itself. It's like have a path, know where you're going to go. And if you're gonna bring the big baddie from the previous story back, illustrate that earlier than, you know, the third movie. And I'm telling you, that's how you can see it. It's like, they, they didn't know they were gonna do that. Like in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, you know for the whole trilogy, 
what they're fighting for is keeping Sauron from coming back. And if Palpatine was gonna come back, they should have illustrated that in the first movie. You can have this jack off named Snoke be the one who turned Kylo Ren, and then he gets killed in the first movie. They're like, oh, we're done. The, the evil's dead. And then Palpatine's little message goes out at the end of the movie, cut to credits. So the second movie, they're like, we need to stop him from coming back. Third movie, he comes back, and now we really have problems, or something like that. Granted, I don't think George Lucas would have wanted that. And bringing him back, fuck me. All right, new lighting. Lighting is a little different. Actually, it looks a little more epic here. Through the circuit breaker in my filming room and it just won't go back. Like, I, I just can't turn the circuit breaker back on. So I got to call a technician rather than burn my house down. To move everything into my bedroom and now we finish the video in here. Shit, I got to the end of this thing. I totally forgot to talk about the fact that Leia and Ben Solo, they both die. Leia dies after distracting Ben Solo. Ben Solo dies after the whole confrontation with Palpatine. Then they both disappear, which means they become one with the Force. Which Leia I can buy. Ben Solo, d did he know how to do that? He turned bad so young in life. I feel like that, that takes a little longer to do. I don't know. Well, I... I guess he did. But in the end, I've said most of what I'm gonna say. This Disney Star Wars trilogy, it's a testament to have a plan. Have all the producers, directors, writers in a room, the round table discussion to go, okay, what's the plan for the entire trilogy? That's why like this Disney Star Wars trilogy, in the end, it made me appreciate the prequels more because though they are flawed, they are the vision of a person who knew where it was going. There's consistency there and it actually has good lore, just not great script, but good lore. And most importantly, it feels like a Star Wars adventure. Funny enough, if I look at the Rise of Skywalker as its own thing, like it's the only thing that happened after Return of the Jedi. It was Return of the Jedi 40 years later, this new crew, and the Emperor is coming back, so this new crew we've never met before, they have to stop him. It's probably not too bad. It's just a one-time adventure, a one-off. But that's not the case. It, it's a trilogy. It's a trilogy that really, it was at war with itself. It just played tug of war. J.J. Abrams was pulling it this way. Ryan Johnson pulled it that way. J.J. Abrams now has to spend time pulling it back that way. And if you're playing tug of war, you're not gaining any ground. So I don't blame Abrams. He did the best with what he could. Really, if I'm looking at it and I'm being honest, the concept of a trilogy, it's a tradition. Also three is a magic number. But Star Wars trilogies have just always been the way, but I don't think there would have been any shame in having a 10th movie. Being like, look, <laughs> instead of a trilogy, we're gonna have four movies in this saga because, well, um, damage control. We gotta make up a lot of ground. There were some wrenches thrown in the gears, and so we just have to spend a movie cleaning that up, then we'll wrap it up. Instead, you have Rise of Skywalker trying to do two things and be three movies. Then when we reach the end, you have the Emperor like, strike me down and my essence will possess your body, and I, I guess... I know, like, if we're doing deep cuts, if we're going deep into the lore of the Sith, there's this essence transfer power that Sith have done. But we haven't seen that in the movies and it doesn't feel like they're paying homage to the old powers. It feels like they're just scrambling and trying to create a scenario that'll turn Rey bad with no setup. Just seems like a rush job. You can't just go Palpatine's alive somehow. He created Snoke. He's been every voice Kylo Ren's ever heard in his head. He has a fleet of Star Destroyers that have been hidden. All of them have Death Star style cannons attached to them. Rey is all the Jedi, I am all the Sith. And if she kills me, I transfer my essence and evil into her. And have your answer be, cuz Star Wars. These are the biggest leaps that have ever happened in a Star Wars movie, and the movie just doesn't do a good job at conveying how. I'll say this, if I'm talking trilogies, I think the Matrix Revolutions finished off the Matrix trilogy better than Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker finished off the Disney Star Wars trilogy. And if this is closing the book on the Skywalker saga, this is how the Skywalker saga ends, not with a bang, but a whimper. Nah, for me, it just ends on Endor. I guess that's a big reason it bummed me out because you know, when The Force Awakens came out, I was like, oh yeah, all right, I get it. A little, uh, it's, it's very familiar, but we're back on track. And I was just always hoping they were gonna pull it off and a lot of people were out there like, they're not, no, fuck this. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then it turns out, well, they were right. And if I can sum it up in one sentence, it's from the great Woody from Toy Story. Thank you. That wasn't flying. That was falling with style. All right, so Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? What did you like? What did you not like? Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.